Where do the Saints stand after eight days of work in West Virginia? We'll discuss the highs and lows of training camp. Plus, Sean Payton was not a happy man after a sloppy black and gold scrimmage. LSU's quarterback battle drags along as fall practice begins, but how good will the Tiger defense be? And after a poor 2014 season, Tulane looks to make significant improvement this year. This is the last word on sports. Fourth down on four starts now. We're more than one week into training camp now, and what have we learned? On the positive side, the weakest position on last year's team, cornerback, looks like a strength with New Orleanians Keenan Lewis and Delvin Bro, along with free agent Brandon Browner. But beyond that and Drew Brees, many questions exist. I'm Doug Mouton. Welcome to our first all football edition of fourth down on four this season. Lions Yellen poses the questions from West Virginia. We've all got questions about these Saints. Questions that after last season, we want answered. Some we can answer already. Of course, for others, like is this team capable of winning a championship, we'll just have to wait. Next question. All right, let's start with this one. Is Drew Brees in decline? His best days behind him? I feel good. I feel like I'm um, on track with the things that, that I'm wanting to accomplish in camp. He looks good, too. He's been very sharp and, frankly, is the least of the Saints' worries. Next question. Okay, how about the running backs? How good can Mark Ingram, C.J. Spiller, and Kyrie Robinson be? And the whole running back core really is that's as good as we've ever had here. I mean, we've got some studs back there, and so I, we're well aware that between our quarterback and our, and our backfield, if we do well, we're not going to be unsuccessful. That certainly seems to be the case. No one in black and gold questions whether Mark Ingram can be a featured back. He proved that a year ago. Now he's the unquestioned leader of the group. The more pressing question, can they all stay healthy? Can I say something a second? We're not going to talk about injuries at these press conferences. Next question. Are the Saints' young receivers ready for prime time? Honestly, all our receivers have done some really good things. Willie Sneed has done some good things. Jalen Saunders has done some good things. But really, no one has been better than Brandon Coleman. And now the position that seemed like the biggest question mark heading into camp no longer does. Next question. That's three questions, brother. Yeah, we know. And don't worry, we'll have plenty more about the defense. But first, what about the revamped offensive line? It all starts there, doesn't it? It's not like we have some massive, massive insufficiency at quarterback where we could pass protect all day and we might throw for 100 yards. You give him all day to throw, he's going to tear somebody up. And if you give Mark Ingram a seam, he's going to take advantage of it. So we're well aware that it's on our shoulders, I would say, all the time. That's why the Saints traded for Max Unger, who so far has been a brick wall. And then there's Teron Armstead. There is no ceiling for him. He could be one of the best of all time. The real question is at left guard. Tim Lolito has the inside track but he struggled and was held out of Friday's scrimmage for undisclosed reasons. Would you like to say it again? We won't discuss injuries. Let's talk Ben Watson. He's been one of the bright spots so far. Real steady, and he's been that way since the day we got him. But is he a sufficient replacement for Jimmy Graham, especially in the red zone? Yeah, um, I got a lot of trust and confidence in Ben, and he's a true professional. Um, he can do everything. Um, lucky to have him and you know I'm excited about the opportunity he has most assume Josh Hill would be that replacement but to this point he's not been the answer next question now let's focus on the other side of the ball the Saints defense was one of the worst in the league last year Rob Ryan says things will be better this season that there's a whole new vision one that's entirely different than when he arrived in 2013 I mean, no one's going to advance that vision you know I'll speak for myself but in my opinion, better than I will. Still, it begs the question, will it actually work? We've got the beautiful vision here. We've got the players to do it, and we're excited. But there are so many questions, like what about the health of Jairus Bird? He's a critical part of that new vision, one that centers around a single high safety, which he's supposed to play. But so far, that hasn't gone as planned. Just like a year ago, he began camp on the physically unable to perform list. 
Sean Payton hasn't said much, but he did say Bird would return soon. There's a progression to it, uh, you know, land-based movements, um, walkthroughs, all of that. Uh, he's on schedule, so there's, fortunately, I said this yesterday, that there hadn't been any setbacks, um, and I think that's encouraging. The fact is, after two weeks of camp, there's plenty to be encouraged about, but even more that's worrisome. But perhaps that's simply because there aren't a whole lot of answers for a growing list of questions. Reporting with the Saints in West Virginia, Lions Yellen, fourth down on four. And we'll pose a few more questions to Lions in a few minutes. But first, the sloppiness that was the Saints black and gold scrimmage. There was no full tackling, so it's hard to get a good read on a bunch of positions. A host of guys sat out. It was quick and it was largely uneventful aside from the mistakes, which left Sean Payton less than happy. We've got to be able to handle the substitutions better. That that's that's one thing for sure. Rob Ryan could be heard screaming throughout. You can't play in a game. It happened the other day at practice. We go three snaps in a row with 10 guys on the field defensively. And we go out there today, we got 12, we got 12, we got 10. I mean, listen, that's got to be cleaned up. A lot of things are being called, you know what I mean? And I think uh, we got to get better at that, you know what I mean? Making things a lot more clear on the sideline. So the young guys are hearing a lot of things, you know, or whatnot. So we just got to get clear on uh, some of the communication. The defense did extra running after the scrimmage because of the mistakes. Even the always upbeat Drew Brees said overall it was a little sloppy. Uh, we weren't as sharp as we, we need to be. Actually, Brees was. He played one series and hit five of six passes, including a TD to Marcus Colston. That's the positive to take away because obviously any kind of a playoff run must start with number nine. And there were two big moments in the scrimmage. The first from rookie free agent R.J. Harris, interfered with by Brian Dixon. Harris still made a spectacular diving catch. And second-year safety Vinny Sinceri, who perfectly read the Garrett Grayson pass, stepped in front for the interception. That's just one play. But Sean Payton said a play like that matters. It's a turnover, you know, so a turnover in the, you know, in the fringe or close to the red zone. I mean, that's a, it's a, a significant play if it happens in a game. Those big plays were overshadowed by the confusion of the substitution issues. And clearly it gives the Saints something to work on this week, heading into preseason game number one. No matter how many times they tell you this is just like practice, it just doesn't feel like it's just practice. It's as soon as you tag it with the name scrimmage, I think guys are kind of amped up a little bit, and sometimes that leads to some mental errors. And we've got plenty to work on, but I, I think guys are working hard and, and doing the things that we need to do to, to get better when the time comes. Earlier today, we posed some of the biggest Saints questions to Lions yelling in West Virginia. First, how concerned should we be about Jarris Bird? The Saints want to play a lot of a single high safety. They gave Bird $54 million to be that guy. How critical is his absence? I think you have to be concerned, Doug. The whole new vision for the Saints defense is designed around Jarris Bird at that single high safety, and we saw it last year. This unit could not develop any chemistry, and right now, with him not on the field, they're not able to do that this year either. And then you put Brandon Browner into the mix. He's trying to develop with this unit, and it, the whole thing is just in shambles right now. But I think the one saving grace for them is the fact that Raphael Bush is a more than capable back up and has shown that he can do a good job in that position. Watching the Saints offense, the main thing that concerns me is their ability to stretch defenses. If you play Ben Watson and Marcus Colston and Brandon Coleman together, you're going to see a lot of press coverage, a lot of guys in the box. How much of a concern do you think that is? <laughs> Again, this is another area to be concerned with, Doug. We saw it last year. The Saints were so ineffective stretching the field. Drew Brees never really had time to throw the ball deep. But I think Brandon Cooks has to be that weapon down the field. He's too fast, too quick, and really is so good in the air, adjusting his body uh, on those deep throws. So I think he can be that weapon. But look, there needs to be one more guy that steps up into that position. If defenses are allowed to throw these guys off their route, 
routes, there's got to be somebody going deep down the field, and I think that could be Shontavious Jones. With Brandon Coleman out of the lineup over the last few days, resting due to some ailment, we've seen Shontavious Jones begin to emerge, and I think he has the speed to be that guy along with Cooks that can stretch the field. The first preseason game is just a few days away. Give me a couple of guys you'll be watching closely, a couple of guys who need to have a big day. Let's start on the offensive side of the ball, Doug. I think we've talked so often about guys performing well in practice. They've got to translate it to a game, and I think that begins with the receivers. Brandon Coleman and Shontavious Jones. We've talked a lot about these guys and how they've been developing over the offseason. Now I want to see it in action, and if they can do that against full speed, tackle to the ground competition. Now on the other side of the ball, I'm going with Stefan Anthony. The guy has looked so sharp so far. He has great football instincts. And more than that, he's playing the Mike linebacker position, which is the quarterback of the defense. So it's crucial that he's able to communicate not only with the sideline, but his players in the huddle. I want to see how he stacks up against some of the other offenses in this league, not just against the Saints. And then of course, Akeem Hicks. He has looked brilliant so far. He's lost Lost some weight, slimmed down, and he has been a absolute terror in the backfield. I want to see if he too can carry that over into the game. Thanks, Lions. Coming up, we'll head to Baton Rouge where LSU fall practices are underway. But there are a few questions about both the Tigers' quarterback situation and the new look defense, plus how a former local prep star got the attention of Les Miles. And later, Tulane's 2014 season left little to cheer about, but why Curtis Johnson thinks the Green Wave can make vast improvements this season. LSU has some big questions to answer, and we'll find out about the 2015 Tigers quickly. It's a team with enormous talent. Leonard Fournette, Jamal Adams, Vidal Alexander, Kendall Beckwith, a bunch of guys with big-time NFL-type ability. But as fall practice kicks off, they've also got more than their share of questions. As LSU fall practice got underway this week, most of the players wearing purple and white were overshadowed by two guys in green. Sophomore Brandon Harris and junior Anthony Jennings will battle it out for the Tigers' starting quarterback job. And while Jennings had the trust of Les Miles for most of last season, it's Harris who seems to have an early edge during the first week of camp and throughout summer workouts. I certainly think that he got more reps by far. How much ground he made up, I'm not certain. Uh, it'll be something that we'll look at. I think if he just, you know, if he manages the game well, if he does the things he's capable of doing, I think he'll be fine, whoever he is. He's grown. He's grown up. I can honestly say that. You know, last year, some of the things he would do, he wanted to, you know, make all the plays on his own. You know, and now he feels like, you know, we can we can make plays for him, and he he has a good feel for that. You know, he's not trying to make a home run on every play. You know, he's not throw, trying to throw a bomb every time we call a pass. But you know, he's making good reads. Even with Heisman candidate Leonard Fournette in the backfield, it'll be crucial for LSU to get solid quarterback play because we really don't know what the Tiger defense has at this point. We do know that defensive coordinator John Chavis is gone, replaced by Kevin Steele, with some help from defensive line coach Ed Ogeron. But Coach O doesn't have a ton of depth on the D-line, and he'll need to have some players step up to get LSU a capable pass rush. The good news is that the Tigers have a solid linebacking core, led by junior Kendall Beckwith, and a super talented secondary, led by third-year starter Tredavious White, who was honored with the opportunity to wear the number 18 jersey earlier this week. I rode over here in a car with him. I was like, man, they're going to give you that 18. But I'm telling you, he's like, no, nah, they ain't going to give me the 18. He's like, there's no way. Like, I mean, I, I was expecting that to go to, I mean, I guess you can say an older guy. He's a junior, but I mean, he deserves it. You know, I've just, uh, i never seen anyone work as hard as Tredavious White. It's an honor. Uh, it, it feels great. Uh, you know, teammates joking with me about it, and uh, I feel like, you know, I'm going to wear it with class, and uh, I'm just going to do, you know, be a great character guy around the team and just try to do everything on and off the field the right, the right way. White, along with safeties Jalen Mills and Jamal Adams, make up what could be the SEC's best secondary. It's filled with a ton of young, talented depth. 
including former Riverdale speedster Dante Jackson. Jackson played receiver in high school, but will play quarterback for LSU. And his explosive speed wowed Les Miles on Thursday. The kid's fast. <laughs> the kid's really fast, man. I think he's an outstanding athlete. Um, he's a great, great freshman that's going to come in and help us. Um, so the sky's the limit for him as well. Super fast, super athletic. Uh, he really did. He really came in and he did a real good job covering um, in this summer. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm excited about. It. I'm excited to see him see him play. LSU's defense was shaky the second half of last season, struggling to get off the field in crucial situations. But this year's squad is looking to the ball hawking 2011 defense for inspiration. I definitely uh, watched them when I was. Um, in high school, um, I definitely think we should bring that back and as well as swagger, uh, just the confidence of the team as a whole. Man, the turnovers that they had, I mean, just watching guys like Tyron, Mo, I mean, just everybody just taking the ball. I mean, they took, like, they took, they, it was their ball. They knew it was their ball and they wouldn't get it. Once you have a defense like that, you know, number one in pretty much every, every, every category it is, uh, you know, we want to pride ourselves to be like them. And uh, I feel like, you know, today we put, we made a big st uh, step forward to uh, being there. This defense probably won't be as good as that one, but a change in attitude is necessary if this team hopes to stay near the top of a stacked SEC Western Division where there are no gimme wins. LSU will face two of those opponents, Mississippi State and Auburn, in the first three games. So both the new-look defense and whichever guy wins the quarterback battle will have just game one against McNeese State to gain confidence before facing SEC competition. We know 8-5 eight and, five, eight and five wasn't acceptable here, and uh, you know, so we're, we're a national championship caliber team, and uh, we got to live up to that and just prepare well for it. There are seven teams in the SEC West. Five start the season ranked. Alabama at three, Auburn seven, LSU 13, Ole Miss 15, and Arkansas 20. The other two are the top two teams in others receiving votes. So Mississippi State 26, Texas A&M 27. It is, without question, the best single division in college football. Still to come, why Tulane coach Curtis Johnson's Green Wave players will be focusing on their academics this year as much as they'll focus on the playbook. We'll head uptown to preview their season when we come back. Curtis Johnson is as optimistic and upbeat as any college football coach, coach you'll meet, even after a frustrating 3-9 and nine season last year, which came thanks to a ton of freshman mistakes. But C.J. believes he does have the talent right now to make a significant improvement, as Leslie Spoon reports. Tulane finished last season with just three wins. Clearly, the green wave needs to improve, but Curtis Johnson isn't a win at any cost type of head coach. You know, one thing I told those kids' parents, you're going you're gonna to graduate. And if you're not going to do that, then, you know, and I, I, you know, I got to stick to my word. I got I to gotta have some teeth in what I say. What the coach says is, if you can't win in the classroom, you won't be suiting up. Edward Williams and Leonard Davis won't be playing this, this season for us. They'll be red shirting. They need to work on their academics. They're not on graduation track. I don't know about the school, but for me, if these guys are not going to graduate, they're not going to play. They will, however, contribute. Johnson says the two will play on the scout team this fall. Now, senior defensive end Royce LaFrance knows all too well that Johnson means business. He didn't play a single snap in spring because of poor academics. What I learned through the whole thing is, man, never take nothing for granted to be going that fast. So always stay on top of everything you got to do. Be responsible for everything you, you know, you put to the test. The university is doing an outstanding job graduating. Guys, that's, that's one thing that we're good at. You know, now we just got to win some games. That's an understatement. Tulane has gone four and eight or worse in nine of the past 10 years. Their only winning season coming in 2013 with a loss in the New Orleans Bowl. You know, it's always mo mo great motivation when you when you don't reach your goals. You know, we're going to win more games this year and we're going to play well. Last year is, is a big building block and a big, big reason that we're going to be good this year. I mean, and uh, so to learn from our mistakes and learn from losing a few games, and we had a lot of good things happen last year as well. So just to, we can build off of all those things and you know, have more success this season. Tulane was certainly tested last year, forced to play a whole crop of freshmen as they transitioned from Conference USA play to the AAC and from their home at the Mercedes-Benz Superdome to Yulman Stadium. <laughs> You're just going to see a more comfortable team. Last year, maybe guys had to think more. Um, you know, they were in a, a stadium they've never been in, around playing in front of more people than they ever have, and now they could just kind of focus on what's in between the white lines and just 
to make plays. They're going to need to make a lot of plays to take this program to where fans expect it to be. A trip to a bowl game is a reasonable goal for the Wave in 2015. Leslie Spoon, fourth down on four. All right, thanks, Leslie. Two late season starts fast. Both Duke and Georgia Tech played in bowl games last year. The Blue Devils come uptown for a Thursday night kickoff, then the Wave travel to Atlanta. Game three, Tulane gets a little bit of a break as the main Black Bears and FCS school comes to New Orleans. Back with more fourth down on four in a minute. The Arena Football League ceased the operations of the New Orleans Voodoo Sunday. The franchise appears to be finished. For Lions Yellen and photographer Adam Ney in West Virginia, Leslie Spoon, producer Danny Rockwell, and all of us here at Eyewitness Sports, I'm Doug Mouton. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next week on 4th Down on 4.